Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello Achievers, this is episode 107 of the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast I took a mouthful of drink and I nearly spat it out because you actually got the number right without having to check. And I feel like that's because of my subliminal pushing on you earlier this week. (laughs) A podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My name is Sasha Black and here with me every single week is... I'm so proud of you. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, I just not laughed. I don't just not laugh. Oh. Oh, Daniel Wilcox, hello. There we go. Finally, we got here. <laughs> hey, how's your week been? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> my week has been good. Um, oh, I don't know. Like, I haven't actually thought about this part or looked back at like the last week. I so oh, this is why, because we've been off for a couple of weeks. This is why I'm out of out of sync, because obviously we did the double episode when you went to London Book Fair, which I'm sure you'll tell us all about. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been good. Last week was the first week of Easter half term for my boy. And so he was with me and I spent a lot of time ignoring all the work stuff and trying to like just spend time with him because um, I don't always get that that often. So we went to the cinema he discovered Sonic the Hedgehog, which is awesome for me because I was a big Sonic the Hedgehog player person. Um, growing up, like me and my brother used to just hammer those games. And like the new film for people who are fans of Sonic, I highly recommend it. Just it just plays so much, just lip service to to the the brand, I guess the character. Um, and then we went to the Deep, which is like an aquarium over on the British coast. Um, found out that I went the day before an author friend of ours went which was like so weirdly untimely because if I just sync that up we probably could have like matched up and gone because I was free on the next day as well but you know it is what it is um and yeah so I think I think having that break has really helped chill out a lot of some of the the niggles and problems that I was having um because I feel much more focused on my business I feel like I've, I've gone through I know what my quarter two um targets are for myself I know the kind of things I've been working on over this year and I've got a very solid game plan and I've been doing a lot of work with my business coach to, to help me with some of the stuff going forward. And yeah, I'm just, I think I'm, I'm in a good place. The, the one thing that I am craving is returning to fiction, which I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. And like, it's, it's nice to have that urge again. Mm. Um, but at the same time, there's also there's that element of like, okay, the business and, and like the income needs to come first in the way that I'm, I'm building it um but what I am going to do is actually start dedicating more time just like tiny chunks because I think inspired a little bit like what you said last time we forget that when we were first getting into this business like those snatches of time were enough to write a book and we were producing and it was happening and that's something I've certainly fallen off the wagon of because of, it's like you need this optimal time and I think when you you write all day and you work in this business all day it then gets harder to write for fun um yeah. But I am feeling the the return to that. And also I, I got a new cup, which replaces like the old cup that I very much loved that I accidentally dropped into the sink and it shattered. And I am very happy with the size of it. It's a good solid weight if I just next to the mic. Um, and I don't know about you, but I certainly find like the shape of the cup and the especially the sort of roundness of the lip really changes the taste and the flavour. of. So what, uh, anyway... <laughs> So this is my new cup for people watching on YouTube. It's got an Urobos on it, if that's how you say it. Yeah. I how about you, Sasha? To, I would love to claim credit for having said that, but it was Claire who said it to me, and then I replayed her words. So um, how have I been? Well, in keeping with the rest of this you're, year... You're number four positivity, right? <laughs> <laughs> in keeping with the rest of this year the last two weeks have been a clusterfuck (laughs) so went to London Book Fair was amazing um I it was amazing and horrific all at the same time so I think I have been right I'm sorry because I'm 
talking for long periods of time. I'm, I'm trying to get to the end of the story. Right. OK. I definitely have have either always had underlying sensory issues or I have developed sensory issues <laughs> like since working on my own and being in silence for like eight hours a day. And um, I booked a room at London Book Fair that were, had no window. And at the time when I walked in, I was like, oh, this is weird. And then um, when I got partway through the fair, when I was completely oversensitized and like exhausted and I had to go back to the hotel room, um, I sat in the pitch black because I turned the light off and of course there was no sources of external light so it went pitch black in the middle of the day and I just sat in silence a bit like your um, thingy isolation pod isolation pod yes thank yeah. you um, and it was fantastic and it was like the best 20 minutes and I literally felt like I'd my brain got reset by that 20 minutes so um, yeah I definitely <laughs> might have to look at so a bit more self-care I think in terms of looking after myself and also I think I really underestimated how little peopling I've done um over the last oh yeah yeah like well the last three years I would say because obviously we um, left our jobs three years ago um and I think it's definitely yeah. had a bit of a detrimental impact on me <laughs> so anyway but the London Book Fair was really good um there was some it was serendipitous things. I met Scott. I met Helen. Um, I had dinner with some friends. Uh, yeah, so it was just, it was lovely. It was really, really good. And then I came home and I managed mm. to get COVID from the book fair. So I currently have COVID, which is why uh, I keep muting every so often to like cough, or I don't know if that was before we started, but yeah, so um, <clears throat> I have COVID and uh, I, I am definitely on the other side of it now, but um but still <laughs> it's irritating so yeah that has pretty much been my week yeah two weeks yeah I'm, I'm sure it hasn't stopped you <laughs> no I I it's funny but like everyone was like ah oh, rest 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 and I was like but like if I really needed to rest my body would make me rest so <laughs> that's I don't think that's the best way to function <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna run until I hit this wall <laughs> the wall will tell me to stop um, I'm going to swim until a shark eats me. Well, uh, that was, yeah. Okay, well, maybe that's not quite what I meant. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jeez. look, I, I just, I had stuff that I needed to do. Yeah. That, I mean, I that is one stuff. of the, it's one of the downsides of, of our business. And we, we've been very sort of honest with this is like, if we don't do the work, no one does. And sometimes the work has to happen. Yeah, and I had otherwise. deadlines. Literal. Yeah actual like pre-order upload deadlines 10 business days before the deadline mm -hmm. was draft to digital and that was today and I had like 500 corrections to make on Trey literally well, I don't actually know if it was 500 but it was a fucking lot of corrections yeah, I saw and, the tabs <clears throat> yeah it was a lot and I had to finish reading it so like to be fair one of the days I just sat on the sofa and read like 200 200 and Oh, I'm sorry, pages. Sasha, that sounds awful. Well, do you know what I mean? So, like, it was yeah. kind of resting. The fact that I was picking up typos and stuff. Like, well, I was sat down. It was just. I mean, reading. I was doing that on someone's book yesterday, and like, <laughs> I don't even know this guy. Well, just anyway, being like, there's a typo there. And then, um, yeah. So anyway, anyway, I sort yeah. of haven't really been resting, but it's fine. Um, so, it is interesting what you say though about like because. I think in three or four days, I forget whether it's the 17th or 18th, is my three year anniversary of being full time, mm -hmm. which I often forget when that comes around. And like, it's kind of at this point, unbelievable to see the change in that time, just obviously in my own personal life, but like the business life as well. Um, but you're right, like we, because we work alone so often, it's very, very difficult. And I, obviously the pandemic didn't help because otherwise you would have still been seeing friends and doing things and being in rooms full of people. Mm. Um, but I found I was walking, I was walking Luna the other day, yesterday, and the, uh, came across these two old ladies that had these two dogs and they were very interested in Luna. So I stood and had a chat with them. I think I was probably about two or three minutes and I was like, I've had enough. Let's go. Cause I just, I just, I was like, I've run out of words and I don't want to talk anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how I feel like 90% of the time, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so yeah, that's a, that, it's funny because I always remember the anniversary because it was so, so significant. So I was in such a dark place before I left and uh, I always do an annual review. So I've just started like penning down the that's lessons, like the highlights. So I've done what I did one after a year. I did one after two years and I'm just starting to write my, it's always a solo show. It's like the only consistent solo, solo show I do every single year. Solo. Yeah. 
Um, and oh, I will yeah. continue to do that until I stop learning things, which will probably be never. So this will mm-hmm. probably be the rest of my life. Um, anyway, <clears throat> what are we doing? Uh, we've done a check in. But do we have a level up? We do have a little, little, little level up and it comes from SD Blackthorn, who just finished the very first rough draft of the first ever reader magnet. That's and that huge. in itself is awesome because I I think people underestimate the power of reader magnets. I think it's one of those things that people are like you write the novel and then people are like you should try a reader magnet. What yeah. I started telling people is write like know what your main story is, but then write the reader magnet potentially first. Yeah. Or like once you finish that first draft before you go into edits, write the reader magnet because once that's out there, that can do stuff for you while you're then writing the rest of the stuff. Yeah, it just puts you ahead. So that's that's a huge step. Well done. Agree. Uh, Patreon. We're not going to talk about Patreon today um do we have any notices we have a notice from myself correct um so i am by the time this airs the full sort of public launch of the mastermind will be live so it's called the writers to authors mastermind the idea behind it is that you take your goal that you want to take it could be finishing that first book in terms of the first draft it could be publishing your novel if you're already written and you're struggling to get it out there it could be looking at getting your first 500 readers whatever that goal is you can come and bring it to the writers to authors mastermind and it is a six-month program in which we meet twice uh, twice a month or once every fortnight as a group once a month with myself in which we coach and we go through and we look at all the different things that we can do to help you reach whatever that specific goal is and it really is an accelerator to helping you get ahead to where you want to be in your author business. Um, we've just literally, as of yesterday, wrapped up the first mastermind and the, the feedback has been glowing. The guys in that cohort have done some fantastic things. I'm so, so proud of them. Um, and so, yeah, that will all be up at activatedauthors.com forward slash mastermind. And if you want to get involved, all the information is over there. Amazing. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Big yawn. <clears throat> uh-huh. What have you enjoyed this week? Oh, my new cup. No. Um. <laughs> oh, um. I think just reading. I found my groove again with reading uh, out of the blue. So I finished. Uh, I read Stephen King's Misery, which uh, it's been a while since I've read a Stephen King because I think I found, <laughs> I really love his writing and I love his worlds. I love his stories and like Stephen King's a huge influence of mine, of course. Um, but I do find that some of the books that I read, they're so full of fluff and I feel like you can cut about 40% out of them and they'd still make like a much tighter book. Obviously you then get rid of what makes King King. Um, but I, somebody brought up Misery and I was like, oh, I've not actually read that. I knew the story of as so I went through and I was just enthralled and I read it cover to cover and it was incredible. Um, and That's then the only Stephen King I own. Is it? Yeah. I haven't read it, but I own it. It is good. It is good. Um, and then from that, I have a stack of about four, half read books on my nightstand that um i started reading and then put down for for different reasons um and i ended up finishing four thousand weeks um i can understand why you don't like it fucking hated that book so fucking much <laughs> like i am not okay that with that book in any way shape or form uh-huh um and then i also have like i say about three four on my nightstand still that i'm working through but i'm actually in a good pattern of reading and um i'm finding myself sort of drawn back to reading a bunch of horror books again probably linked in with the the urge to fiction and yeah i'm just i'm just kind of in a groove with with reading and i'm i'm enjoying that i also think just before i move on from that um i also think part of that is because i don't have a good well i have a good reads goal but i've made it so small i don't care about it i think allowing myself just to read for the pleasure of it has really helped me get back into it i am in a reading funk (gasps) yeah i've absorbed your powers so um, I am really struggling with reading because it's become a bit of a chore. Um, obviously, I had to read my book and do all those typos, which was the second time I've read it this year. And that was like, you know, I don't really like rereading, let alone. It's a big book too. It's a big book and let alone rereading my own stuff. So that felt like a chore because I was having to really focus on it. And then I was reading a book from a publicist that... Um, all I'll say is it's historical fiction, which is not really my bag. And I just, there was some representation in it that I didn't, I just didn't really, it was very strange. and I didn't get on with the book at all. And um, usually because they've sent me a copy, I would just plow through um, and have the person on the show. But I, I really didn't, I just didn't want to read it. So I just, I mm. you know, got about 110 pages in or 130 pages in, whatever it was. And I just I had to email them back and say, I'm really sorry. Um, <clears throat> DNF. 
so yeah that was a dnf so that kind of and then the book that i'm reading at the moment is not great and then i've got a uh masterclass book <laughs> that i started and was like oh god this is also historical fiction <laughs> yeah so i'm just like oh reading as a chore and reading should how never, do you find your way into historical fiction <clears throat> I don't know. I fucking hate historical fiction, though. I literally hate it. I, I am going to make a point of really, like, actively avoiding historical fiction after I get through this next book, because mm. it 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 really puts me off reading. Like, I just hate it. I hate it. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I hate Renee. everything about it. <laughs> no, it's just... It, Everyone has if somebody references. can write historical fiction that isn't wordy that is contemporary language and fast misses paced. all the tropes of historical <clears throat> fiction exactly which is why it's just not for me do you know what i mean but that isn't that the point of writing right yes. that we that we have different genres for what different people like historical mm-hmm. fiction just not for me um mm-hmm. anyway the thing the thing oh the, the, this is this what is have you one. enjoyed Sasha? this is <laughs> This is one that for the masterclass, um, but it's fine. I'm going to read this in audiobook and find a different one that I can deconstruct. Um, she who became the son. I'm sure that's yeah. next man. Shelley Parker son, uh, Chan, sorry, Shelley Parker Chan. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's just move on. Uh, London Book Fair. <laughs> <laughs> London Book Fair was what I enjoyed. Right. Okay. We have an that's, announcement. That's all we're getting? <clears throat> yes, that is all you're getting. Because I okay. just ranted okay. like, okay, so we have an announcement um shall I just make the announcement and then we can talk about it or yeah okay yeah so um sort of suggested by me but in in a uh, mutual agreement Dan and I have decided to bring next level authors to a close and so we are going to be uh, we've got today's episode and then we're going to record one more and we will be ending at the end of April bombshell yeah bombshell. um <clears throat> oh my god this fucking throat <laughs> um can you talk for a bit <laughs> yeah like it's so podcasts like this obviously we started this back in 2020 um we didn't know that we were going to start it at the beginning of a pandemic um but it certainly was as we've kind of said a lot of the time like it was a checkpoint in our lives and a, a checking point each week to kind of reflect to go through do the level up goals all that kind of stuff. Um, we've been running for a couple of years now. And I think people who are long-term listeners of the show have seen kind of how much our journeys have changed and the different things we're working on and all the different questions we've kind of asked over the last 107 episodes so far um, kind of, I think, naturally lead us to this point because, you know, we talk about rest, we talk about saying no, we talk about the things we focus on. A lot of them, the questions are kind of like, I like, uh, I think it was Helen um, who said that, it's the NLA just looking at the list of questions is a great way to kind of like just assess your business and look at it. Yeah. Um, and ultimately I think with, with podcasts like this and, you know, this isn't unusual. Jay and Rachel certainly had the same thing where you get to a point where you start to run out of questions. But I think at the same time, like we're very, very aware of our own bandwidth and the kind of things that we want to do. And um, we just, we just need to clear up that extra bit of space so that we can kind of like run off in different directions, but still kind of call each other on the phone Um, And it's, as Sasha says, it's a mutual thing. It's kind of, you know, come to, I think, a natural standstill. And I think with stuff like this, if you continue to carry on, it reaches a point of diminishing returns. It doesn't actually do listeners um, a good service. But like, we're still friends. We still plan to keep in touch and to to hang and to do all that kind of cool stuff. Um, It will just mean that we kind of clear up uh, yet like another to do item on on the list each week so that we can crack on. Yeah, that that was kind of the, I think... I have not had any perspective for a really long time Mm -hmm. and going to London Book Fair kind of reminded me what I want to be doing and I love this and I love you and I love what we created but I monstrosity (laughs) yeah (laughs) but I I am also aware that it is more or less one working day a month of time to do the show and and that is like not doing all the admin behind it and like I am so desperate to spend time writing words and I'm trying to put more boundaries in and say no to things and like yeah just clear up more space so that I can work on the things that I really want to like this year has been really like really tough 
for me of, of since we started, I think the last three months have been the hardest because even though <clears throat> like I had Atlas for eight straight months, the last three months have felt harder because I've been possibly because I've been closer to the point where I could write and Mm -hmm. still not able to write so I did all of that work closing off all of those projects and then I kind of thought I was going to come into this year being able to write and then Chloe got COVID and then Atlas got COVID and then I busted my knee and then Atlas got COVID again and then it was London Book Fair and now I've got COVID and so it's just been like one thing after another and I'm just like I, I have to make some drastic decisions and drastic cutbacks in order to be able to get the time to do the stuff that I want and mm-hmm. yeah all of the things that you said it's not that we're not having a breakup <laughs> don't you dare fucking break up with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, also I think I think you know <clears throat> quitting podcasts is very much in vogue at the minute and I think it will do a great deal for our reputation I mean six figure authors is doing it <laughs> we can do it <laughs> <laughs> well and th- so th- this is a funny thing like you have a different podcast I've obviously got rebel authors but like there is and I have think I have mentioned this before like I do have a desire to do a podcast that is more closely related to my fiction yeah don't know if I am going to do that um I'm not saying no but I'm not saying yes also yeah. um and there is just no way that I could do that doing this as well um mm-hmm. and yeah I mean right now the, to find oh, go on. I was just gonna say right now the only thing that I want to do is write words so I, yeah. it's not gonna happen I mean, anytime yeah. soon but yeah yeah and I mean even tr- trying to find the time to fit in to do this among our schedules has been like we've had to move things around because my personal situations change and then obviously you've got like priorities well, and things to work on and like the we used to tent- Friday nights do you remember that's how, when we started wasn't it Friday nights and then we went to Friday mornings and then we've come to Thursday oh, yeah. and then like we've recorded all over the place to try and fit mm-hmm. it in but it's actually been really fucking difficult to keep doing it consistently yeah, yeah. I'm definitely much more creative in the morning um and so like this time obviously like well, well it's awesome to talk and to do this stuff like I could I could be getting words down as well and, and working yeah. on different things and yeah yeah it's um like it's no reflection at all on the audience like we love you guys and it's been really sort of um humbling to have you guys follow along the journey get involved in all the different challenges suffice to say there will be no (laughs) q2 challenge yeah um but yeah so in terms of the patrons this is why we didn't talk about patreon today um what we are going to do is our next q a is going to be on the 20th so we will run that q a um and then after that q a we are going to close the patreon account because then you won't get charged anymore Mm -hmm. because obviously it will become defunct um and yeah i think i think that's it on the patreon The patrons will know before this goes live Yes, they will. Yes. They will have already been told. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and then, yeah, we'll keep the um, we will keep the feed open so that people can still go back and listen to the old episodes and yes. go through and like enjoy all the bands. I'm sure I'll be visiting, revisiting at certain points just to have my self reflection. But yeah, yeah and it'll, that it'll and that two year video was just epic. I will continue oh. to rewatch that for the yes. longest time. Yes. Um, okay, winners. No one in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> so we have pulled the winners from the uh, q1 challenge congratulations to everyone who pledged and everyone who succeeded commiserations to those who didn't quite life has been a bitch like i realized that week that i took and it, it wasn't even a full week off but that week that i let myself rest a bit was probably the first time since like july last year um so you know commiserations like you still managed to crack out some awesome stuff where are the winners here? So the winners of the two prizes, which number one was Sasha's uh, Villains Masterclass, goes to Ember May. Congratulations, Ember. And then uh, the free month of Activated Authors Unlimited membership goes to Cassie. So Cassie, I'll be getting in touch with you and send you all the information to jump on over if you choose to jump in and get involved in Activated Authors. Awesome. Comments? Oh, I don't want to do that. No, I'm joking. Uh, so we had one comment actually from, from last week, which was... From Edwin, who says, rest. Do I even work hard enough to deserve a rest? I consider every chance I get to head out on one of my walks a rest. Though I may arrive at my destination, bushed, I also think of a road trip as a rest, especially if I have the option of driving a new route. I haven't had a week off since 1995, but I have set weekends aside for special events or family time. Um, It's it's such a theme of of my last week as well, because I had a big talk with sort of my business coach and and the group about how different people rest on, on what kind of things. And yeah, I like that. Like as we said last week, rest looks different for everyone. Mm-hmm. So I do sometimes find rest in long drives because it's just there's no distractions and it's just you time and you just have to focus on the simple thing and do so. 
yeah i get that i get that okay question of the week i really hope i haven't asked this i did try and check so i will make another one up if if i have but how do you know when you're holding yourself back normally crying um oh man heavy hitter yeah um it's a hard one yeah and i think in a way kind of timely because i swinging this back to kind of what we we're just saying a second ago about rest i'm really trying to be aware right now of what i need as an author as a dad as a person mm. um and i'm really grappling with what my ideal week looks like in terms of things like rest but also being productive and actually part of the discussion i had this week with the sort of coaching group was i make no secret of the fact that i burned hard from essentially 2015 to around yesterday um <laughs> until no, until about beginning of 2021 and then last year was when i put everything on the board and decided what to cut because i was doing too much and as i say i've probably shrunk the amount of things i was doing by at least 40 50 percent um but in i because i spent so many years pushing myself to the limit to the point that i broke a little um i have slowly been trying to like peel back but the entire time i then have that fear of what if i'm peeling back too much and therefore obviously holding myself back from achieving the things that i could be achieving because i am going in the other direction um and i think if anything over the last few months i have found a much better balance among my work my personal life what my priorities are I still have this deep seated need and drive to do so, 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 so many things, but I've learned that I can't do them all at once. Like not to the extent that I was like, I, I, I did crash hard. Um, but I think it, it's, it's one of those things that, and it might be like a shitty answer, but it really is like a gut instinct. I think if you have an opportunity and you're thinking I don't have the energy or the time or anything for this. You know, whether or not that is important to you and whether that needs to happen. And if you are not going to do that thing, you know that you're holding yourself back. So I guess an example of this has this year been that Ukraine campaign. I was um, low energy. I was sort of not in a good headspace when all that kind of stuff came up. So realistically, if I was to go by my, my typical levels of energy and how I measure what I'm getting on with, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have pushed ahead. But at the same time, like I have zero regrets for that because I knew that I could and I knew that I should, um, which are two, two very, very um, powerful factors to pushing me forward. And so I kind of, I kind of try and just assess the opportunity cost and how much energy it will take. And I think it's that thing as well of if we're talking about I don't know if I should do this. Oftentimes that means you've made the decision and you're going to do this. Um, But I think it's one of those things where only your personal compass can tell you, like don't let other people tell you what what your limits are. You have to learn and you have to know. And, you know, sometimes if you miss an opportunity, you feel it deep down and then you know that you should have gone for that thing. And then you can use that information and learn for next time. Um, Yeah, I think, I think the answer is pretty pretty woo woo but it comes with experience it comes with failing it comes with succeeding and it comes with kind of just learning who you are over time and, and what you are capable of and like i say i'm i really am in this point because i i feel very comfortable right now which is strange because i've essentially slashed 40 percent of my income but i feel very calm and okay in the stuff that i'm doing how many hours i'm putting into it the time that i'm not putting into it um giving myself permission to kind of relax and do other things as well like I feel okay which is kind of weirdly scary for me as well because I'm like well what am I letting drop but at the minute nothing like I'm I'm on top of stuff things are rolling things are growing um yeah yeah 
Interesting. Interesting. I definitely agree about the woo-woo and the gut feeling. I think there's often, I think we, I think you can often spot when you're holding yourself back because you circle or you cycle over something. You keep coming back to something that you haven't done or that you want to do, but you've come up with reasons why you shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And when you keep coming back to it, I think that is a sign that probably you should have done it. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think that there is something that I haven't quite articulated in advance of this show. I don't know. There's something that I can't quite grasp, but like there's a, so, so for me, I always have to push to to the physical, mental, metaphorical, (laughs) physiological level as hard as I possibly can. And I think when I don't do that, I'm holding myself back. But I, I can't necessarily tell you what that looks like. But I definitely like I think I think it was who was it? I think it was Jonathan Yanez on your I saw one on one of your little clips on Instagram. And he said if he's not exhausted by the end of the day, then he's not spent the day. Then he's yeah, not spent yeah, the day yeah. properly. And that really hit home for me. And I was like, oh, he yeah. wants to die empty. Yeah. Yeah. I want to die empty. I want to die empty too, because I will have given my absolute all to absolutely everything that I have done. Um, and it's not really about energy spent. That's not really what I'm talking about. It's more about like your being and your essence and just like removing limits and boundaries like so one of the biggest ones for me is saying no to stuff like I that is how I hold myself back is that I say yes to too many things and it's yeah. self um, self-sabotaging because I <coughs> we take a momentary pause while Sasha collapses into a fit of hysterical coughing due to her COVID-19 status please bear with us for one moment and now to return to your normal programming we return to another break. <laughs> Sasha dies on camera. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. Um, oh, my shoulders hurt from carrying you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. What was I saying? I don't know what I was You're saying. You're saying about um, it's not necessarily like energy spent. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> COVID, COVID people. Um, yeah, it's not. it's not energy spent. It's like... Ah, saying yes, saying saying yes to things. So, um, yeah, it's self-sabotaging. Saying yes to too many things means I don't get to work on the stuff that I need to work on. And, like, this week, my coach said something interesting to me, and it was about framing, and so often everything is about framing because that helps your mindset Mm -hmm. um, and how, how you approach stuff. And she said to me, because I said she was lots of people have recommended the Eisenhower matrix. And I'm like, no, everything is important. Therefore, I I do not understand how to use the Eisenhower matrix. You know, it's like the important, urgent, not important, but urgent, uh, not urgent, not important, not whatever the other one is. Yeah. And 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 I and I said to her, I can't use that matrix because everything is important. And like I just don't have that functionality in my brain or the frame in my brain to understand how to separate out the tasks into those boxes. Cause I've tried before and I just end up with one box with like 78 tasks in and then like two, two or three tasks in the other boxes. And what she said to me, well, this is the interest. This is the interesting bit. What she said to me was what won't fail if you don't do it this week. And I was like, Mm. oh, and it's all about competition, right? Because what do I think is going to fail? What am I going to lose if I, if I don't do it, if I do do it this week, right? So the way that she's framed it is what will fail if you don't do it this week? So those are the, those are the things that I have to do this week. Everything else, bye-bye. I can do yeah. it next week. And that was that changed everything for me. And it kind of made me realize how 
it, it gave me a frame for understanding what I can say no to and therefore I can stop holding myself back. Like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's just language because it's, 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 it's prior, prioritization is prioritization. Right. But for mm. somebody who didn't understand it, she used the right language for me to understand how to differentiate between tasks anyway. And, um, Yeah. So I think one of the biggest ways that I hold myself back is by saying yes to too many things that I shouldn't be doing. hundred percent. So that has been like a bit of a journey and lesson for me. Yeah. I've I've definitely been on that kind of like line of thinking this week. And the analogy that comes in my head is that a sniper rifle shoots further than a sawn-off shotgun. Mm. I don't get it. What do you mean? Well, if you have one focus thing and you fire, (laughs) it goes straight. Mm. And not necessarily one focusing, but if you have a direction that you know you want to hit, and then if you fire a, sh- a sawn off shotgun, it will splatter, but it won't go far. So you can do all of the things and you won't get very far, or you can choose whichever bullet you're going to ride sort of into the distance. Very sort of aggressive analogy, I know, but that's kind of like how my head thinks of it. Um, very good for people with high focus, not so good with people uh, with like a ranger and other strengths that like to do multiple. Well, no, but I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be that one focus is right to the book. It's like for me, that one focus for me is activated authors and activated yeah, yeah. authors encompasses all this other stuff. So, yes, you know, yes. there are things I have to do within that. But also within that focus, I could um, and I've had this talk with someone recently, like I could focus on like courses if I want to. I could focus on this, but I can't do them all at once. So at the minute, like activated authors is my straight line. Um, if I want to do courses, I'll focus on that for a bit. Well, obviously the podcast still goes, so you don't ignore the other stuff, but it's just rather than last year when I was getting activated, author started, I was running Devil's Rock, looking to publish other people. I was running anthologies. I was writing my own work. I was coaching people. I was also ghostwriting. I was also doing stuff like this. Like that, that's just too many things. Yeah. And that's not yeah. even the extent of everything that was on my board because I had ideas for like just a lot of things that I was like, I'm going to get this started. And then I didn't. And it's like good because I'm, I'm learning to, play within the boundaries of where my energy is and what was very interesting was um (coughs) excuse me i've got it now on that uh group call i had this week it wasn't necessarily because i asked how other people rest because my the the specificity of that question obviously i'm writing a book on productivity and and getting things done so i'm very interested to see how other people like myself rest and like what hobbies how people view it and uh i don't know how it came around to it but i told people about my my deathbed avatar and was like I, I don't want to get to 80 and look back. Uh, I want to get to 80 and look back on the life well lived. And immediately, and this was the part I found interesting, immediately everyone came back with, well, the thing that people don't regret on their deathbed is doing too much work. Uh, they, no, wait, how am I framing that? People, the thing that people don't regret on their deathbed is like not working enough. And I was like, that wasn't what I was talking about. Because I a life well lived to me is, and we, we come back to this word balance and that's subjective, but like, running a business that supports the life that I want to live. That's that's kind of like the basics of what I want to do. I just find it very interesting that people immediately thought I was talking about just work on my deathbed. And I'm like, no, on my deathbed, I know that I'm going to be proud of time that I've spent with Bailey, time yeah. that I've seen family, time that I've spent with friends. It's, I just, I just, and, and, and then it circles back into um, another kind of principle that I live by, which is um, Kevin Hart, I got this from, was just live each day better than yesterday even if it's a little bit all you can do is just incrementally improve and that's how people achieve success or happiness is like just just be a little better whatever that looks like whether it's eating healthy or whether it's going for a walk whether it's calling a friend whether it's working a little bit more because you need to and then if you have days in which you slip because you're unwell or other things come up take that as a fairly new baseline and just work your way back up again that's that's all life is it's just up and then down and up and then down yeah yeah and I will never regret the time I spend writing books but I will definitely regret the amount of time I spend doing admin (laughs) <laughs> yeah i had um mark leslie the fabe on my podcast this week and oh, he, i love him oh yeah beautiful man um but he certainly reminded me of that in quite a, a harsh way um oh really yeah no, i don't think directly either i think it was just more it's, it's one of those things where you see someone as um high profile as for want of a better word busy like he does a lot of stuff and still producing and still doing this stuff and the fact that Someone like him even says like the focus is on the creativity it has to be. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's kind of what slipped the last six months or so. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm fighting my way back to. Is yeah. To prioritize that over everything. Yeah. And also, I think <clears throat> in speaking about this, a very roundabout way of answering your question, which what was the exact wording again? How do you, How do you know, know when you're holding? Yeah. So 
I come to the times before I started writing and how every day there was like, um, I'm probably going to try and write today. I'm going to try and write today. I'm going to try and write. And the days would go by to the point that it began to hurt. And that's yeah. when you know you're holding yourself back because the desire to do beats the desire to fail. Yes, yes. Pain, pain points. That is, that is, oh, what perfect Desperation place or inspiration. Well, so this is the interesting thing for me because um, pain, competition is one of the only strengths that has a thread in it related connected to pain so competition people use pain as motivation whereas most of the other strengths like bulk away from pain so like if it's not hard like for example I won't do a workout unless like I'm gonna go into like muscle failure or like what's the point yeah exactly literally what is the point what is the point of doing a workout unless it's really (laughs) fucking intense so my mum like, used to come back from my workouts to be like, I'm like, how are you feeling? Oh, fine. I'm like, you didn't work hard enough. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But like, <laughs> also, I need to be quicker to react when I'm in pain mentally from not doing the things that I want to be doing, like writing yeah. or spending more time wording. Um, anyway, excellent. I'm going to go away and intellect on that. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so question of the week this week is, uh, how do you know when you're holding yourself back? And we will see you for the last time next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. For more of me, check out the Activated Authors podcast. For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author Podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become Next Level Authors. I I might lose myself down that rabbit hole. Nothing like another hobby. Another? I don't know what my current hobbies are. (laughs) What are your hobbies? Coffee. Winning. I have so much to say, but I don't want to open that door.